Go. Oh, everybody! Do you want me to tell you who I am? Yeah, just a, just a brief um, who you are. Right, yeah. What the you power, do and how you feel. We need the power together! Uh, hi, we can I'm have less Dr. Dr. Tony O'Sullivan, a retired together. children's doctor, retired in March. I'm co-chair of Keeper NHS Public. We agree that the NHS has never been in greater danger. Um, Keeper NHS Public, which is a national organisation of, of about 80 branches now, including union organisations, uh, launched health campaigns together in autumn 2015 to try to get all the different NHS groups fighting to support the NHS to work together for a common purpose. Because the, the government's been so united in its attack on the NHS and undermining it in a very ideological aggressive um, way like and we've got to unite uh, in support of it and I'm not saying there are too many groups but we need to come together to common purpose so health campaigns together is now uh, in its fourth edition it's a newspaper of that affiliation group of uh, about 30 different organizations we're calling a demonstration the 4th of March that the, the, the demands of it are very basic fund the NHS properly return it to public hands um, drive out privatisation and oppose the STPs, the Sustainability and, and Transformation Plans, that are actually the vehicle for driving through £22 billion pounds of cuts. Thank you very much for coming. So we are calling March, 4th of March, please be there. Thank you. Right, so I thought, you know, I suddenly woke up 3.30 in the morning in a cold sweat when I'd read the S STP for Gloucestershire. It was just an outrageous sort of conflation of ideas which just made everything seem like it's going to be rosy that everyone's going to live at home and be looked after at home when it comes to it there's 230 million pounds needs to be found out of the budget for Gloucestershire that is just going to slice huge chunks off of stuff there's doctors the, the surgeries in Northern Ireland they all want to go private for instance 13 out of 18 surgeries in in one of the one of the parts of Northern Ireland want to go private what's going on that's what that's what they want it's going to gradually feed into this country until eventually all our all our gps are are privatized you know they'll say oh no don't go in go to the next hospital look into the next um, what i'm worried about is because i work with children it's a wider issue you know you won't have speech therapists coming to the schools they're part of the national health service the school nurse the people who do the immunisations for the children. So um, mum and I go around the schools after hours, wait for the parents to come out, and we let them know this is what could be happening to the National Health Service. It's not just about the hospital, it's our whole health right across the board. And you know, it's people like us who've got to get out there and talk because I, you know, from the politician side of it, I, I don't know what's happening there. It just seems to be some people are really interested and others are just pushing it through. I mean, we can feel it, can't we, really, with the Tories? You can just feel it. This is what's going to happen. It's privatisation at the bottom of this. We know that. We know what the American Health Service is like, which is, you know, people sitting on the road asking for money for their cancer treatments. We'll be seeing that here soon. You know, if, if this goes through, and to do it over Christmas or any festive time is, you know, that's really low. You know, that's really a body blow. But I think we've got to show that ordinary people get out there and we're the people that matter. Because all they want is a vote. What happens to us after that and in between elections, I don't think holds much water. So it's up to us now to get out there and push it. And I think it's coming. Been a bit long, but it's coming. So we're really pleased that, you know, we can be out here. And also, uh, we're carers for each other and we work with other people who are caring for family members. So, we need these hospitals local in general, like anaesthetic. <laughs> That's the way we look at it, you know. We're the ones at two o'clock in the morning have got to get up and worry about how we're getting to a hospital. We had two little boys, seven and nine, when I was calling out in our local square. And um, one of the little lads said that his mum has to go for blood transfusions and he has to take her if she gets ill at two three in the morning a nine-year-old child has got to make his mind up of how he gets you to hospital it's just not on it's those that human suffering the figures and all that i don't understand numerical stuff i'm not business minded but you know things have got to come from people up this is not a poor country we all know that so it's up to us to say how we want our money spent and how we care if we don't care for each other why bother so that's why we're out here thank you 
cut from our NHS in England. This is pretty much a quarter of the budget. And this will mean the beginning of our final battle to save the NHS. Without food to make sure their children have enough to eat. Disgusting. GPs prescribing nutritional drinks to starving patients to keep them alive. The disabled trapped in their homes, abandoned and forgotten by a government that cares for nobody but its rich friends. The elderly forced to sell their homes to leave their loved ones and a lifetime of memories. And those who remain battered and heartbroken by a country that's abandoned them, forced to make a choice between heat for their home or a meal for the table. Thousands of our sick have died after being declared fit to work. The homeless, cold and hungry are dying on our streets. 17 million people have less than a hundred pounds in savings. That's Healthcare workers, do not compromise your ethics. Remember why you become doctors and do not allow job coaches in your GPs. <laughs> Seven five.